Yes, hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Unclear with me, Seamus Brady, your host. It's another video on Social Media Reacts. It's episode 8 of the series, brought to you once again by our sponsors, Capture Athletics. Make sure to check them out if you need any athletic wear, sportswear, anything like that. Make sure to check out Capture Athletics. Let's dive right into the tweets. Obviously, it was the Allianz League finals across the weekend. We had four extraordinary finals, uh, particularly the Division 1 final between Dublin and Derry. But we're going to start off with something different. Obviously, Jalop Burns was the new president of the GAA and his speeches were fantastic. Number one, he got the names right. But number two, he really built up each captain. I mean, that's him doing his speech for Evan O'Carroll there, which was his first speech as the new GA president. And a massive shout out to Leroji.ie. That is the Irish version of Balls.ie. So give that a follow if you don't already. Great to see the Irish language being promoted like that. But Jarlet Burns' first speech there, as I said, Osquelga, on Cade Road, on Uchtaran Nua, Jarlet Burns, De Asade. That is it. I mean, he built up Evan O'Carroll and he built up every captain that went up there. Jarlet Burns gave them the respect that they deserved. And any time I've listened to him speak, he speaks very, very, very well. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what Jarlet Burns has in store. Now, the best game of the weekend was the Dublin Derry game. Like Carol Kane's tweet here, after an incredible game of football, Derry are National League champions. They had it won, lost it, won it again, lost it again, and finally got the right side of it. A seventh Division One title in Derry's history. Where to begin with a report on that? That was that's that game in a nutshell there by Carol Kane. That game was just nuts. Like there was so much going on. There were so many talking points. There were so many decisions that were made that were definitely controversial, and we're going to dive into them as well. But the game just had everything you could want from a big game. It was end-to-end. -end. As he said there, Derry won it three times before they actually got over the line to the victory on penalties. Just an absolutely extraordinary contest. Morris Brosnan tweets here about it. Get rid of the league finals. Died 6.20 p.m. March 31st, 2024. I mean, that pretty much sums it up well. Like, everybody was talking before about scrapping the league finals. I mean, that just hasn't aged well at all because... Like the Division 4 final was a bit one sided. The Division 3 final was very exciting in the last 10 minutes. Same thing with the Division 2 final. And then the Division 1 final was one of the best games of Gaelic football I've seen in my life. <laughs> I've been alive since 2001. It had absolutely everything. Another tweet here by Carol Kane. Worries about the defensive side of his game have held Lachlan Murray back to this point. But in terms of a scoring forward, he looks exactly like what Derry need. Really fluid half of football. Dublin the side with the goal threat. Derry getting at their pressure points, though. That was obviously made at half time, and Lachlan Murray had hit the equaliser to send the teams in level at half time. And Lachlan Murray has really developed now in this league campaign. You've got players as well there like Cormac Murphy that have come into the forwards. Now Lachlan has taken big step forwards as well. They weren't entirely reliant on Shane McGuigan in that league final, but Shane McGuigan was vastly their top scorer over the, the, the entire Division One campaign. So it is something that they need to keep their eye on. Now, this was probably one of the funniest moments of the game. Niall McIntyre says, love this. Brendan Rodgers and Brian Fenton lay into each other, then have a good laugh together. I don't know if you saw that clip, but basically the two of them had what I would consider as very similar to what John Small and David Clifford had, that famous scene where they're shoving each other and grabbing each other's jersey and then they fist bump at the end. It was one of those where Fenton and Rodgers were shoving each other's shoulder in each other and then they put the arm around each other and they were both clearly laughing. They're two born competitors, born winners. And I think deep down they like that they've met their match in each other because there really is no separating Dublin and Derry. They played each other three times. So they played each other four times. Dublin have won two. Derry have won two. So, I mean, it really is that close between the two teams. Colin Barkinson's tweet here says, great to see this proper rivalry forming here. Derry can't put them away. I mean, that's what it felt like when you're watching the game. You were like, especially the little schmozzle as well after Dublin's late equalising goal from Greg McEnany. It was like, this is a real proper rivalry developing right in front of our eyes. And it's a great thing to see. Now, the controversial decision. Now, <laughs> GA Joe says, never a free in a million years. And that was a lay free that was given for a quote-unquote fell on Keen Murphy. Now, I'm from Dublin, so a lot of people will expect me to just say, yeah, no, of course it was free. It wasn't. It wasn't a free. <laughs> no, never in a million years was that a free. And uh, Dublin definitely got out of jail on that one. And Joe Brody certainly let his frustrations be known. Oh, for sake, has anybody a wooden stake and a sledgehammer? I mean, I definitely would have been feeling pretty pissed off after that if I was a Derry fan as well. 
now moving on to the next one. The tweets about this game were endless. Thomas Niblock says here, Owen McAvoy, what a finish. 1-1 from halfback, a stunning young footballer. He ended up finishing the game with 2-2. But both of his goals were absolutely extraordinary. And considering this guy is, what, 21 years old? He's an extraordinary talent. And he's probably going to win Young Footballer of the Year this year. You'd imagine if Derry go all the way to the All-Ireland Final or win the All-Ireland this year, Owen McAvoy will have a big part to play in it and probably win Footballer of the Year as well. Morris Brosnan here again says, man on man everywhere, unreal. This is the future. And I mean, that was what we love to see as well. Both teams really went for it. It was very much a, you know, going toe to toe. Let's see who the best man is. And Derry were the better team on the day. But what we loved is that both teams didn't hold back. Neither team was being defensive or scared to go. You know, when you look at the scores, very high scoring game, 318 to 221. That's what we want to see from a game of Gaelic football. And we have here as well from Enda McGeerty, the importance of a manager in GA can't be underestimated. The turnaround in Donegal's style and attitude in a few months from slow laborers keep ball to that today. And that exactly is it. Like Donegal were, had fallen off a cliff like last year under Paddy Carr. And then obviously when Aidan O'Rourke came in, things still weren't going great. And the way Johnny Gall have just turned around under Jim McGuinness is extraordinary. And it's important that you recognize that because when Jim came in, everybody had this attitude of, oh, well, Johnny Gall are going to turn it around now. It's not always guaranteed. And managers have come back long after they've been successful managers and it hasn't worked out for them. I mean, like there's plenty of examples that across the board and it's worked for Jim McGuinness again because he still is that good of a manager and Donegal definitely were impressive in their Division 2 final victory. A comment in here then from Conor McKenna says Jim McGuinness has won six trophies as manager of Donegal. Donegal won three trophies after his departure from 2015 to 2023, all of which came in a two-year period. I mean, that sums it up. Like Declan Bonner had the pick of the bunch. There's Donegal boss. He had peak Paddy McBrarty, peak Michael Murphy, peak Ryan McHugh and that's why I was saying on various shows is that like I'd almost be annoyed that Jim didn't stick around for 2016 to 2020 because I think there could have been another All-Ireland there in that Donegal team because let's not forget, Jim McGuinness is the only manager to beat Jim Given, Jim Gavin sorry, in championship football, which is absolutely extraordinary. It speaks to how good of a coach Jim Gavin obviously is as well, but it speaks to how damn good Jim McGuinness is. Going back to Conor McKenna now, he says, the only county without a city population in the top two divisions in both hurling and football, league football champions, Westmead really do amazing as a GAA county. They certainly do. I mean, when you look at the Talton Cup victory in 2022, the inaugural Talton Cup champions getting promoted out of Division 3 and then being in the top two divisions in the Alliance Hurling League as well, like pound for pound, Westmead get a hell of a lot out of what they've got. Then going back as well to McKenna, he says, down beat Clare by 11 points last weekend and finished ahead of them in the league table. If Clare beat either of the lowest two ranked Irish teams, Tipperary or Waterford, they'll qualify for the Sam Maguire Cup, likely at Down's expense. Seems like an unfair system. And I mean, that is it. Like Down battered Clare in the last game when everything was on the line. Clare, you would imagine will make it to the Munster final and then book their place in the Sam Maguire Cup. And that will likely be at the expense of down. So that's why losing that game in the Division 3 final was really, really costly to down because it's not just cost them a league crown, which potentially has taken a bit of the shine off the Division 3 campaign because they look flawless from the get-go and Westmead just had their number. But on the same side, it's it could cost them a place in the Sam Maguire Cup, which is absolutely extraordinary to say, unless they obviously make an Ulster final. But take your tin hat. I mean, like, it's going to be a hell of a championship this year, especially when you look at the form of Derry, Donegal. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. Joe Bolly here talking about the Dublin Derry game. He says, what a wonderful adventure of a game. A massive step for Derry in the crusade for Sam. McAvoy came of age. Murray too. The team knows they are good enough. Training from this on in will be electrifying. Each man motivated to get better, to lock in on the biggest prize. I mean, Bolly knows what it takes. He's an All-Ireland winner with Derry in 1993. He was there with legends like Anthony Tohill, Tony Scullion. He knows what it takes. And the thing is, is that Ulster titles, don't get me wrong, would never, ever knock it. Ulster titles are absolutely extraordinary. But to beat Dublin in Croke Park like that, you cannot, you cannot get experience like that. And for Derry now, they've built up a really good base to go for the All-Ireland title. Back-to-back Ulster Championships, Division 1 title, 
like the next one is the All Ireland. That is the next step now. They've done everything else that they could possibly do before it. That's the next one. That's the only one left on the list for Derry to check off, and they're going to take one hard swing of it. And the thing that I noticed was the there was such competitiveness throughout that game. Every single free, there was a bit of shit talk going on in the entire game from both sides. The minute that that last penalty was missed, Derry shook hands with Dublin. That's it. Game over. Shake hands. And there was no talk, which I did really, really like. It was a cold moment because, in my opinion, that was a moment where Derry were saying, like, this isn't our end destination. This is a cool thing to pick up along the way to the All-Ireland title. And I think Derry were making a statement there to Dublin, showing respect in doing so, which I highly, highly respect. But I think they were showing we're down for the big prize here. And going back to McKenna here, he says, 2008 league champions, Derry and Westmead, Dublin beaten in the final. Mickey Hart wins the All-Ireland as a manager. 2024 league champions, Derry and Westmead, Dublin beaten in the final, and then question mark. So as in, they're an omen for Derry that the last time those three things happened in unison, Mickey Hart went on to win the All-Ireland, obviously as Tyrone manager at the time. He's with Derry now. Can Derry do the same thing? I mean, that Tyrone team he had was extraordinary, but this Derry team certainly is brilliant too. And then final part from Jerry McCarthy, Jimmy McGuinness and Mickey Hart lifting cups over their head at Croke Park. The more things change and obviously leaving the dots because the more they stay the same. And I mean, Mickey Hart and Jimmy McGuinness are just timeless managers. They're like fine wines. Like no matter how much time passes by, they are just Rolls Royce coaches. They just stay good, stay with the times, stay updated with the game. I mean, you think about how long ago Mickey Hart managed a team for the first time and how he's still one of the best managers in the country and his hunger and his appetite to come back. Even when Tyrone, that it ended badly, he still came back with Loud and now with Derry, he's still hungry to be the best manager in the country. It's absolutely extraordinary. And that's going to be one hell of a game coming up against Donegal as well. But the truth is we were treated to four extraordinary Allianz Football League Finals and then the Allianz Hurling League Finals as well were brilliant and the Camogie Round 4 was extraordinary as well so a brilliant brilliant weekend of action I was delighted to cover it those are some of the tweets from the biggest personalities in the GA talking about the weekend's action let me know in the comments your thoughts on the weekend's action as well I'll be sure to get around to them as well guys that's been Social Media Reacts episode 8 big shout out to Capture Athletics again for sponsoring us thank you for watching the video and until the next one guys Torah.